going to say I'm totally against video taping while we're on the road. I think Big Dog should be concentrating on the traffic. But he insisted. So, here we are. Why do I need your PSA? It's not PSA. It was a disclaimer. Why do I need your disclaimer on my video? Anyway, first of all, as you can tell, I am paying attention to the road. All she has to do is sit there. I don't know, I'm going to be looking at the road. <laughs> anyway, no. All she has to do is sit there and hold the camera. But the reason why, the reason why I wanted her to uh, to videotape, because I just had something on my mind, and I wanted to get it out, and I didn't have the chance to write it. I didn't have the chance to see the police going by, so you know I'm paying attention. Um, we had a wonderful weekend. We got down here to Delaware Thursday. And we're on our way back to New York now. We're actually on the New Jersey Turnpike. But it was a very touching couple of days simply because... Why is the police car tailgate in the car in front of him? Um, yeah. excuse me. You I'm just sorry. gonna jump my video like I'm this? Sorry. I can care less about the police. They ain't following me. Woman, this man, anim anime. 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 Okay. Just hold the video. Thank you. Now people gonna think I'm in here roughing you off. As I was saying, before I was so rudely interrupted by my, my co-pilot, is that we came down here to sell books. We came down here to make some connections and, and some and reconnect with family and friends. And we got a chance to do all three. Don't forget that we enjoyed our anniversary. Well, I'm getting to that. Um, my anniversary was Thursday, and the one thing that has been consistent in the three years that we've been married is that wonderful things seem to happen around the time of our anniversary from the date that we said I do. From the first year of saying I do, living through Hurricane Dean and, and having such a wonderful wedding, or having a wonderful wedding and then living through Hurricane Dean, to the next year having a trip given to us for free when we had a, finances weren't the way they were supposed to be, to now this year coming down here to this wonderful hotel that was way above what we could actually afford, but being made affordable so we could at least enjoy it for a couple of days. They have $900 suites, well, $900 a night. I don't really care what the price is because, you know what, on a regular, I probably would have never spent anything more than what I spent on a hotel because I'm not big on just wasting money. And as much as I enjoyed it, there's just some things to me that just doesn't make any sense. And as you've seen from the previous video, I'm not spending three dollars for a 75 cent soda or four dollars for a 75 cent bag of chips but that's not the point of this video the point of this video is to simply say when you when you're passionate about something like my wife and i are we're passionate about trying to create opportunities for other authors to experience the joy of having their work out in the world and the other thing that we're passionate about is trying to make sure that we resemble the marriage that we have. We don't just put things out on Facebook just to say, ooh, look, look at us, we're married. We want to show what a good marriage looks like all the way around, what fun you can have in a marriage, how happy a good marriage can make you, because we believe that's what the Lord wants from both of us. The other thing that happened over these last couple of days is we met some tremendous people who may not realize that they're tremendous, who may look at my wife and I as somebody greater than we are, and we're not. We're the same as some of the same people that we met, but it was just their reaction to us. And when the Lord says, a man finds a blessing in a wife, that's true. It's also true that when a man and a woman get together in a matrimony, when the Lord says nothing can break that apart, that's true too, because when you see what you become when you're in a great marriage, you become an entity that the two of you couldn't reach without each other. And people sense that. People came over to us today, um, not today, I mean, I'm sorry, Saturday, and they said, well, we saw y'all having so much fun. I wanted to, to come over and say something. And, and it was just a bonding that went on from people who came over just to talk. And we got a chance to talk about God. And we got a chance to talk about the Bible. We got a chance to talk about the different things that we're doing. Not only did we meet a young man who wants us to publish his book, and he's going to contact me later on this week, he shared things about his own personal life that I didn't ask him to, but he did, and I was blessed that he did. We met a woman that's happily married herself, 
who through looking at my wife and I, she got confirmation on what she's doing with her own marriage. And she invited me to come back and possibly speak at her church in a, another organization that she's working with. And I look forward to it. We met another woman who is interested in having me come back to speak to her woman's group because she was just so excited with how well I knew the scriptures and how well the scriptures played into what my wife and I are doing. And that was, that was Saturday. Sunday, yesterday, we were back in the hometown of Penns Grove, New Jersey. So shout out to all the folks from Penns Grove. And it's hard looking at what my, my little small town, not mine, but what the town I come from looks like. Because I remember what it was like when I was a kid. But recession is hitting hard for everyone. And it hurts to see the closed up and boarded up buildings. And to see just so many of the memories that I had as a child just stripped away. But there's still some great people in that little town. And there's still some wonderful people trying to do some wonderful things for other people. Not so much for themselves. And that leads me to my cousin Tubby. Um, Tubby, thank you so much for reaching out to me on Facebook and asking me to come. I know I don't get the chance to come home as much as I'd like, but being home those two days and reconnecting with folks that I haven't seen since high school, it was truly a blessing because I'm never going to forget where I came from. I'm never going to feel that I'm better than somebody else because that country boy is still in me. I'm just a city kid now, but that country boy is still in me and I enjoy it. And I, hopefully in time I'll be able to get to come back into the area and live because that's what I want to do. Um, that's, what we want to that's what we want to do. I'm sorry. Well, when I say I, I mean you, because I there is no me without you. Thank you, my lovely wife and co-pilot. Um, and Miss Rushi, um, if you're from Pens Grove, you know who Miss Rushi is. Miss Rushi makes some of the best fish that you've had. She has a, a food wagon that sits right outside her house. But the one thing about Miss Rushi is, as she's gotten older, I guess she's gotten better because the food is wonderful. But I had an opportunity to sit down and talk. And we had never talked in the past. She knows my mother, she knows my grandmother, she knows my family well, but we've never had a chance to actually sit down and talk. And let me tell you something, if you're ever in Penns Grove, New Jersey, right outside Whispers Nightclub, you make sure you stop and you speak to this woman. She is one of the hidden blessings of that town because it's not just her ability to cook, it's how much she loves the Lord. But to hear her sit down with me and share with me that she can see things in me that I think I see sometimes in myself, but to hear it come from somebody I know walks this walk with God, it was moving because it was as if I was talking to my own grandmother. And to hear her say that she's tired and she's physically tired and emotionally tired, but she keeps pushing because she knows that's what the Lord wants. But to share with her my story and to hear her say she's proud of me was the same as hearing my grandmother say she's proud of me because you know when someone is coming straight from their heart with what they're saying. So all I could do is give back from my own heart and then to hear her say thank you because your words really helped me today. That's when you have to take a look at yourself and step back and say, wait a minute, maybe God is really trying to show me what I'm supposed to be doing through these books and through the work that I'm trying to do. So when you come on Facebook and you see the videos and you see the pictures and you see the things that I post, understand that the man behind those words is a real man. I am trying to, with all that I can do, with my writing, with the way that I teach, with the way that I love, to reestablish something that's been long gone, that there's real men out here, that there's real married folks out here, that there's folks really enjoying each other, that love is real and that God is real. I'm not here to preach to you. I'm here just trying to show you and share with you my happiness and hope that it'll reignite your own or keep your own going, whatever it can do, because when you stop and take a minute and see the things that God has presented you with, the people that come into your life for no reason, you didn't ask them to, and they show up and they bring such wonderful words of encouragement and they speak highly about things that they don't even know about, but it's something that they feel, you can't ignore that and you can't run from it. So I'm not running anymore. I'm going to do everything I can with my publishing company, with every book that I write, with every day that I get up loving my wife, I'm going to try to make sure the people around me are taken care of, strangers that I meet, if I can offer something. Even if I don't have money, I'm going to try to offer a kind word, and I'll pray with you if you want me to. Because we have to find a way to reconnect 
the things that make us who we are. It's not about money. It's never been about money. And I'll prove it to you. Les Brown makes ten, fifteen, twenty-five thousand dollars to show up and speak. Four people said to me yesterday after coming and talking to me, how come you weren't up there speaking? I would have rather hear, heard you than less. And I'm not putting down Brother Brown. He's been doing it for a much longer time and he's making it happen. But when somebody can say to you that they would rather hear from you than the $25,000 speaker and you're only trying to do what God has put you here to do, there's something to that. It's bigger than me. It's been bigger than me since my birth. But I'm not scared anymore to step up and say, I'm trying to be a man that many other men are scared to be. I'm going to try to be that. And if I fall short, then I ask God to forgive me for everything that I could not get done. But everything that I do is going to try to uplift someone. And I'm asking other authors. I'm asking other publishers. I'm asking husbands. I'm asking brothers. And then I'm asking the sisters, the wives, the daughters. I'm asking everyone. Take a minute out. Look at the people around you in your circles. Look at the strangers who are coming to you. Ask yourself, why do they come and say the things that they say, positive or negative? Because somewhere there's a voice trying to be heard in your life. And if you let it in, positive or negative, then you're going to start to make some changes. I would prefer that you look at the negatives and change them, or you look at the positives and go after them. Either way, don't stand pat. Don't sit back and think everything's good because you're making a couple of dollars. Don't think everything's all right because your family's okay. There is somebody out there who needs to hear from you. Someone out there that if you take a couple of minutes out and shake their hand, but you can't shake their hand if you're trying to jam a book in their hand. You can't get to meet them if you keep trying to lead them back to the product that's in front of you on your table. And I'm speaking to the authors now. I've been to a lot of book signings. And I've watched authors make it only about the product. A person walks up, they can't wait to get the book in their hand, can't wait to get their money, and then they shooing them off so they can get on to the next customer. You know what? There might be someone there whose life you can save. And no matter how much money you made that day, their life is more important than every dollar that you took in. Be responsible for the products that you put out because someone out there has been affected by the words that you put down on paper and the books that you jam in somebody's hand. And publishers, I'm going to come at you too, not in a negative way. I'm just asking, be mindful of what you're putting out there for others to view. Be mindful of what's going out into someone's hands. Be mindful of authors that come to you with product that is just disrespectful to what we already know is a problem in our communities. So if it's about the money, to make as much as you can. I don't want it. And I'm telling anybody who wants to deal with Braven Publishing, don't come to me with any work. Don't come to us with any work that's opposite what these communities need. I don't care if it's the greatest story that's ever lived. I don't want it. Because I don't want anything that's going to cause a problem for mothers, fathers, or whoever else out there with these kids that are out there. So listen, this is KL and his lovely wife Tiffany is my co-pilot and, and, and videographer at the moment. And as I'm coming up on exit 8, right here at Jamesburg, I guess whatever this is, we're still here. I want to say thank you. I want to thank you for all you guys who take the time out to listen and watch all the stuff that Tiff and I put out there. I know y'all may say, you know, I'm tired of these folks. They always talk about their love. You know what? I'm going to ride it out for as long as I can because I know there will be some rough days. And I'm prepared for them and I know Tiff is prepared for them. But why look for them if I can sit on top of this mountain of happiness for as long as I can? I want to say thank you to people who don't know me and don't know us, who's going to look at this video and go, who's this dude doing all this whining about his wife? Well, you know what? I whine about love every day of the week. And I also want to say thank you to some folks who hate me. You know what? Thank you. Because your hate means that I did something wrong, and now I'm trying to make it right. But if you're still holding on to it because of what I was, well, then that's on you. It's not on me anymore. Because I've asked everyone that I did something dirty to you, please forgive me. And if you can't, I understand, but that's between you and God. But you are a motivation for me, too. Because I know every bad thing that I did, and I'm not going backwards for no one. So if you want to hate me, that's fine. I hear kids say haters or whatever that foolishness is. You need haters. You know why? Because if you caused it, you need to clean it up. And I'm willing to do that. So thank you to everyone that's paying attention to this. And so as I sign off, remember to stop by Braven Publishing, www.bravenpublishing.com. Stop by Tiffany Braxton Belvin's or Keith K.L. Belvin's Facebook page. 